In the last couple of scripting examples, we set up Lua and then use scripts to teleport the player or an NPC to a new location on the map. In this tutorial, I'd like to introduce thinking and a simple example of how Lua can leverage thinking. Entities in Source 2 can have think functions that run on a schedule and help provide entities with some autonomy. You can think of think functions as the entity reasoning about what's going on and then taking some action, but it can be as basic as scheduling an entity to write to the console every second for debugging purposes. Before we dive into the code, I've set up a very simple map that's based on the basic setup template that you can load that comes along with the workshop tools. I've added a combine soldier to the map, named him Barney, and under the miscellaneous settings, I've added a script to the entity scripts field. This script will now be associated with this NPC, and you can associate the same script with several NPCs or other entities using this field. The only other thing I've changed from the default settings is that I've gagged the NPC to reduce the chatter for recording. I've also set up an AI relationship but that's becoming pretty standard in all these tutorials, so I won't go into it here. Now this might seem a little strange at first, but along the wall I've lined up a series of six scripted sequences. This is a bit of a hack, and I'll explain why it's there when we look at the Thinking Lua code in a bit. Each of these scripted sequences is named after an action animation that I want the NPC to perform from their think loop. You can name these anything, but I decided to preface them with anim underscore and then the name of the action animation. You can see the action animation is set down here and the target NPC is Barney. I've also set move to position to no so that the NPC will perform this action from wherever they happen to be in the map. I've set it to repeatable so I can run the sequence as many times as I want from the think function. And finally, I set it to override the AI. That's all there is in the map, so let's take a look at the script associated with this NPC. Your script should sit in the vscripts directory, and you can use the path of my script to figure out roughly where yours should be. The file name of the script matches the file name in the entity scripts field in the NPC after the vscripts directory, so it's going to assume that it's already in a directory called vscripts in the right spot. Now first a bit of initialization. Once a script is associated with an NPC, the spawn function is called whenever a new instance of that entity is created. So it's an ideal place to do some code setup. I'm going to print out to the console for debugging first. This is just so I can see that this is working, that the script is running. Then I'm going to use the handle this entity, which is provided by the engine to refer to whatever entity the script was associated with. In this case, it's the combine soldier in the map. Next, I'm going to call setContextThink, which registers a think function. An entity can register multiple think functions, and here I pass nil as the first argument, which is the context name, and we can talk about context in another video. Next is the name of the think function, and finally, there's a delay before it runs for the first time, and I'm just going to set that to zero, so as soon as the entity spawns and activates, it's going to run its think function. We'll define the think function a bit further down the code. The next method we'll look at is the activate, and this runs after everything else in the map has spawned. So if you have to do any setup that involves other entities in the map, this is where you should place that code. I'm going to get a handle to one of the scripted sequences that I'll use in the think function later. To get a handle to an entity in the map, you can use the entities global and run the method find by name with nil as the first parameter and then the name of the entity as a second parameter, and it's going to search through the map to find all entities that match that particular name and return the first one it finds. I talk a bit more about the entities global in an earlier Lua video, so you can check those out. The name of the entity that I'm going to use is anim act signal advance, which is this scripted sequence here. I'm also doing a bit of debugging here by printing out to the console if for some reason find by name fails to find the scripted sequence. In a production map, you probably want to just edit out or remove the print statements. I'm storing the handle to the scripted sequence in a variable that's defined in the file scope. 
Now, very briefly, variables in Lua are accessible within the scope they are defined. So if you define a variable in a function, it's only accessible in that function. Often, for scripts in Half-Life Alex and Source 2 in general, you'll see variables defined outside of functions. So they are accessible by multiple functions further down the file, and you can assign a value to a variable in one function and then use it later on. By finding the scripted sequence in the activate function and assign it to the custom animation sequence variable, I don't have to search again later when I refer to it in the custom think function. Hopefully that's a little more efficient, so I do the search once and not every time the NPC thinks. The last function in the file is our think function. The name of the function must match the name you used in the set context think method call. The first thing I'll do is write out some debug code, a print statement, so I can see in vConsole that it's running. If you use a think function in a released map or mod, you would remove any print statements here because you don't want them to run every time the NPC thinks. Next, I'm going to verify that the variable custom animation sequence is pointing to something other than nil. Nil is the same as null in other programming languages, which is effectively nothing or possibly just some uninitialized memory or zero. It's easiest to think of nil as just nothing. If custom animation sequence is nil, something has gone wrong since it means the engine couldn't find the scripted sequence in the scene. However, if it's not nil, then we have a handle to a valid scripted sequence and we'll call its begin sequence input causing the combine soldier to signal advance. We achieve this with the ent fire by handle which fires the entity's input by taking an entity and here we're going to use the combine soldier and refer to it using this entity followed by a handle to the entities whose input we're going to fire in the map so in this case the scripted sequence and finally, the name of the input that we're going to fire, which is begin sequence. If that works, we should see the combine signal advance every time it thinks. At the bottom of the think method, you return how many seconds, or even fractions of a second, you want to wait before the entity thinks again. And every time it thinks, it's going to use this function. Here I'm waiting 5 seconds, so you can clearly see the pause between thinks. But depending on what you're doing, you might think every tenth of a second. Now remember, you could also have multiple think functions going and firing at different rates. Here we are on the map, and there's our combine soldier. I expect him to signal advance every five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Every five seconds, that think function runs, and that think function tells him to run the scripted sequence with the signal ahead animation. The grunt's AI is still running in the background. Not only is he running our think function, but he's still reacting to other stimulus in the environment. If I shoot him, he'll react to the shot, but still signal advance every five seconds. You can basically augment an existing combine soldier with think functions without losing the built-in AI. It's a nice way to customize the existing assets. Next we'll do something just a tiny bit more complicated. Instead of running just one custom animation sequence, we're going to add a few of them. So the ones that are in the map, we're now going to add variables to point to them from the script. And I'm just going to call them A, B, C, D, E. Now the spawn function is going to stay the same, but in the activate function, I'm going to search for all of the actions by names. I'm going to copy and paste these, and then I'm going to change the names to match the names that are in the map. So anim underscore followed by the name of the actions, I'm just going to set these up again as A, B, C, D, and E. So I'm just taking these from the name field in the scripted sequences. I'm also going to remove this debug statement because I just don't really need it anymore. Now that I have handles to all of the scripted sequences, I'm going to craft an if-else function in Lua that's going to take a random number between 1 and 5 and then play the animation according to the number. So the randin function takes two numbers, the minimum and maximum number, and then picks a number in that range. And I'm going to store that in the local variable num. Then this if else structure is going to check if num is equal to 1, 
then it's going to run the first custom animation in custom animation sequence A. If the number is equal to 2, it's going to run custom animation sequence B, and so on. Else if is the way Lua manages sort of the if-else structure if you've seen them in other programming languages. There's also a catch-all at the end, an else without an if, which is just going to run sequence E if none of the other ones match. And finally, we close out the whole if-else structure with an end. I'm going to return 2 so it picks a new random animation to play every 2 seconds. So here's our combine soldier. You can see he's doing a random animation every couple seconds. And those are from the script sequences that are on the map below the wall there. It's not terribly useful, but there's a lot of situations in animation graphs where the animation chosen is actually just one of two, three, or four different random animations that might fit the situation. So for example, a flinch. There's a few different flinches, it might use a random flinch. And this is just basically, you know, random action. So again, not very useful, but you can imagine different things you can put within these think functions to add some behavior. So the next tutorial I do, I'm going to try and do something a little more interesting with this behavior. You can think about how you might want to build up your own custom artificial intelligence for your NPCs. Thank you for watching, and be sure to let me know if these more complicated tutorials are useful for your modding. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of this stuff.